Let's do one more of our hotline questions. It's talking about the upcoming new casting of getting our brand new James Bond. Check it out. Hey, John. This is Dane from Las Vegas. When it comes to casting a new Bond actor, everyone always guesses the big names like Tom Hardy or Idris Selva or Henry Cavill. But in all honesty, I don't see them hiring a new or a uh, big-time actor because they will ask for a lot right from the start, producing credits, writing credits, etc. So should we really be expecting a big-name actor? All right. Thanks a lot for that, <laughs> man. Um, <laughs> sorry, we're laughing about something off camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, okay, so <laughs> new James Bond is coming. Yeah, new James Bond. New I, James Bond. I, I got the official uh, scoop. What's that? It's right behind you, new James Bond. You got it? <laughs> what am I looking at? It's a James baby. It's a James baby. They said baby they wanted Bond. young and unknown. There's no other. That, I mean, there unknown. it is. James baby. You got it right there, everybody. Baby James Bond. baby. Young and new. So look, and he's right. Every time we talk about a new James Bond, you're, you're 100% right. It's always a big name that we know, whether it's Tom Hiddleston, whether it's Idris Elba, whether it's uh, Rob Stark. I always forget Rob Stark's name. Oh. The guy who's in the new Citadel. Oh, I don't know. Uh, and he was in Eternals. He he was... Uh, oh, okay. Why am I freezing on his name? Guys in the live chat, what was his name again? I'm, I'm freezing on Richard him. Madden. Richard Madden, thank you. Uh, Richard Madden's name comes up. Uh, obviously, my personal pick, Henry Cavill, uh, in there. Th these are all the names. Now, to be fair... That's what happens every time we talk about casting of any character, right? Whenever the question about who should the new Batman be, usually the names that come up in the conversations are big, well-known names. When we talk about who should be in Fantastic Four, normally in those fan conversations, of which we are, we are fans, big popular names get brought up. However, let's not forget that when they cast Daniel Craig, who, by the way, is actually my favorite all-time Bond, uh, I, I've said this before. He combined the kick assness of the Sean Connery bond with the suaveness of the Roger Moore bond. I, and I thought he was a perfect amalgamation of those two things. But when they announced Daniel Craig as the new James Bond, lest we forget, he was a no name. I mean, he had been in a couple of things, but I think the biggest thing that Daniel Craig had been in is he was in like um, Tomb Raider and layer cake. Le oh yeah, that's right. but was that after or before Bond? That was just before. Was it? Oh, so it was Lair Cake. He was in um the one, the first Lara Croft movie. Um, and I think that was about it. Nobody expected that coming. And people hated his casting. Hated it. I still I was doing the movie blog at the time. I was still doing my old website, my first movie website called the movie blog. And I remember this was People, people putting out this campaign started this Craig not Bond campaign. Craig not Bond. He's not this. He's not this. It's like, dude, we haven't even seen one frame of this guy. In the, and it turns out he was great. The highest grossing James Bond films of all time. Listen, say what you will. He's the most successful James Bond in the history of the franchise. He may not be, you, to you, he may not be the best one. That's fair. But he is the most successful James Bond of the franchise. But but to your point, he was an unknown. Laura, Laura says he looks like uh, Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh Daniel Craig. <laughs> There's a picture of young Daniel Craig, ladies and gentlemen. So, so what are the pros and the cons uh, of the approach here about whether they go for a big name actor like a Henry Cavill or Richard Madden, an Idris Elba, something like that? <laughs> you know, I'm oh, sorry. You know who it shouldn't be, right? Who? Sean Bean. <laughs> Sean, he Sean, died in the first movie. He <laughs> dies in the first five minutes of his own Technically, movie. Technically, he was 006 and already died. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. don't forget, he was in the James Bond movie. Oh, he sorry. wasn't James yeah, Bond. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, and he's, didn't he have like an old show, like Something's Rifleman? The Rifleman or something? Sean Bean remember. had like some big successful English he's a, show. He's in everything. He's great. I love Sean Not Bean. For <laughs> Not for long. Not for long, yeah. Right. So what are the pros and cons of going for a named actor versus an unnamed actor. Well, with the named actor, number one, you get instant headlines, right? You get a lot of attention to your project. And if you cast right, 
you get a lot of credibility for your project in the eyes of the audience. So like they come out and announce, listen, any of these names would do it. You come out and announce a Tom Hiddleston, a Richard Madden, an Idris Elba, uh, a Henry Golding, a Henry Cavill. You come out and announce any of those names, you're going to get a lot of buzz and a lot of pop and a lot of excitement. Uh, with a couple of those names, you're going to get the, you know, the racist piece of shit cousin humpers uh, coming out of their, their slimy little word work too. But who gives a shit about them? But you get a, a well-known name that comes out and you're going to get a bunch of excitement, like depending on the one you get. The downside of going out and getting a big name is that there are going to be, look, I would get super excited if Henry Cavill comes out, right? The problem with us as fans is that, yeah, but if you don't get my big name celebrity that I want, then I'll hate it. That's what we do as fans, right? We're all guilty of it. We've all done it. And that's 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 one of the unfortunate things about us as fans. So sure, they come out and announce Henry Cavill as James Bond and I'll get super excited. But then you get a bunch of other people going, oh, I hate the casting of James, of, of Henry Cavill. Hate the casting of Henry Cavill. Blah, 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 blah. So there's that. You probably wouldn't get that with a no name right? It would probably be more tempered. You announce that you're, you're getting Richard Madden. You'll get some people to go, yeah, Richard Madden's awesome. But you, but there are going to be some people who wanted Tom Hiddleston will go, no, that sucks. It had to be Tom Hiddleston or no one. Right? So that's part of the drawback of it. The pro get some instant recognition, get some instant hype. You got a big name attached to it. The con is with a singular big name, you're going to get the people who wanted other big names are going to get really upset. Uh, a lot of the big names you mentioned, because I'm going uh, by what the producer was saying and the Robert last one we did about how they wanted to be a younger Bond with, you know, that has a gravitas or whatever like yeah. that. So that eliminates half of those guys. That we but remember, the, the one guy, the one producer also came out and said they don't want to go too young. Right. Because they don't want to go, like, they're not going to go and get somebody in their 20s for this because they, right. they don't think they're going to be able to carry the weight of what it means to be James Bond quite yet. Now, let's look at the, the pros and cons of getting a no name. Well, the con is obvious, right? It's people are going to look like they did at Daniel Craig when he first got announced and go, what? You got who? There, there's going to be an initial, an initial sense of deflation. Like, because people are, been, are going to be excited to hear who the name's new James Bond is. And they come out and say, oh, oh, uh, Edward Fargaflaw is going to be Edgar Flogaflaw, everybody, is our new James Bond. And everybody's going to be like, w wait, what? Like, all that enthusiasm is going to suddenly drop. It's like, I, well, we've never heard of Edgar Flogaflaw. Oh, he was fantastic in the Czechoslovakian uh, daytime drama, Hopes of the Soap. Uh, it was fantastic. And he was really Hope good. Hope he don't they, drop you know, the soap. People are, Czechoslovakia isn't even a country anymore. I don't know why I mentioned that one, but um, it, 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 you have that thing. There's going to be an instant deflation. The pro of a no name though is that you'll get that clean slate, right? There's not going to be like you announce a Henry Cavill, a Tom Hiddleston, uh, a Tom uh, Hardy, uh, a you mention any of those, you're going to instantly have detractors. Instantly, there are going to be some people that hate the casting. Mm -hmm. You go with a no name, I think that's going to be tempered a bit because they won't know them enough to have a lot to hate. Mm -hmm. So it, there's pros and cons. And then like Daniel Craig, you give somebody who's a no name the opportunity to make Bond their own and to really grow into the role. It's like when Daniel Craig became Bond, we didn't see Daniel Craig as Batman because, well, let's pretend he was Batman in the movie. Like, we'd be looking at Daniel Craig and, like, maybe instead of seeing James Bond, we would see him as Batman. Or maybe we would see him as Detective, uh, uh, what's his what's his name in the in the Glass Onion movies again? Oh, I did. I almost said Hercule Perot, but that's obviously the... Oh, the, yeah. Uh, uh, Benoit oh Blanc. Benoit Blanc, yeah. Right? I always remember, it sounds like a pen. <laughs> if at the time, he was already in the Glass Onion movies... Like we we're going, oh, like I just see Benoit Block. I don't see, right? But you get a no-name actor. It's like, well, you don't see him as anything else. You only see him as James Bond. I still think they will go the route of a named actor. I think they're they're going to want to make a big splash. I have no insider information on this. I, I have no proof of this. It's just me guessing as a fan. But my feeling is that they're going to go the route of an experienced named actor that they can build on at that point. I, I could be wrong. I don't know, Jonathan, like we talked about the pros and cons of getting a, uh, a no name of getting named. Which way do you think they're going to go? 
I mean, gosh, I don't know. I think I think they kind of need to go the route again of like a Daniel Craig where they have experience, obviously, on set, and they're good actors, but they're not like a major brand name, like something attached to Game of Thrones, like Madden or whatever. I, I think they have to go a little more original. All right, guys, the question is for you. What do you think about that? What direction do you see them going with James Bond? Do you see other pros and cons for going with a named established actor? Do you see other pros and cons for maybe going with a no name? Which way do you think they're ultimately going to go? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's show, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. When the spring sunshine is calling your name, don't call for takeout. Get HelloFresh instead. Their quick and easy meals make feeding the family and yourself a cinch and without the high price tag. Their new fast and fresh options are ready in just 15 minutes or less. And guys, don't worry about it if you're not exactly a pro in the kitchen. HelloFresh's foolproof recipes arrive pre-portioned and easy to prepare in just a few steps. You guys know Ann and I have been using HelloFresh for a long time now, and we absolutely love it. Both of us being working professionals, it's often difficult for us to find time to make dinner together. But with HelloFresh, it's easy, it's fun, and it's absolutely delicious. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Campia16 and use the code Campia 16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Campia 16 using the promo code for 16 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. 